Without a doubt, the most asked question on my YouTube channel is why do I use so many roundabouts? And today, you, you guys, you are in luck because I am finally going to do a very specific dedicated video just to roundabouts. So get ready to see a lot of circles, a lot of roundabouts, and everything roundabouts. So let's go. So some of you may know there are actually many different benefits from using a roundabout. Some of you, I guess, don't know that quite yet but they are quite easy to implement and can be used in various areas throughout the city and in more rural areas. Obviously, they're not going to fit into all areas of your city or rural areas, but they can work and I'm going to tell you guys what are the main benefits, where and how to build them, and also when not to build them. So before I get into everything, there's obviously a huge amount of benefits, huge amount of reasons where and where not to build them, but I'm not gonna cover every single one. This is a big discussion in the town planning world. This is something that people study for a really long time and I remember studying it a little bit in university and I only touched the surface and that was through many semesters of learning about it. So these are just some very quick tips that I can think of. So yeah, so obviously the first one is going to be, it's going to improve traffic flow. It's going to reduce delay. So many people think that roundabouts make you wait longer but they actually make you go through quicker because even though you slow down to go through a roundabout the overall waiting time for everyone is a lot quicker so roundabouts promote a continuous flow of traffic so unlike intersections with traffic signals drivers don't have to wait for a green light at a roundabout to get through the intersection so traffic is not really required to stop they're only required to yield and that yield time is much less than waiting for a green light so the intersection can handle more traffic in the same amount of time. Everyone gets through quicker, so it's just a lot more easier. People find they're more happy with a roundabout because they don't have to wait in a huge traffic lineup. So this is the one of the one of the main reasons why I use it, and it's a really simple, efficient design to put into your city. Second benefit is less space. So yes, they do technically take up more space due to the round shape sometimes. But that's not really what I mean by this. So they often take up less space on the streets approaching the roundabout because the roundabouts can handle a greater volume of traffic more efficiently than signals. So where drivers may need to line up to wait for a green light, roundabouts usually require less lanes. So if you have an intersection, you might have a slip lane to go from one part to the next part, but a roundabout, they don't always do that. Sometimes they do if there's a lot of traffic, but generally roundabouts, you don't need so many lanes. So that is another reason. So it's it can technically be more compact. The third benefit is cost. For city skylines, not really important, but in real life, they are much more cheaper in the long run. So roundabouts, it's quite simple to build and the upkeep in the long run is minimal. Traffic light intersections obviously cost more due to producing the automatic traffic light timing and there's also the upkeep for that and also just another random benefit is if there's a power outage roundabouts are still going to work whereas if there's a power outage and the traffic lights stop people do get confused and there could be some crashes for that. So anyway next benefit is safety so there has been many, many, many studies sh that show that roundabouts cause much less crashes and injuries than an intersection. So if I remember off the top of my head from uni a few years ago, it's something like 35% less crashes and something like 70% less injury. So obviously it's a lot, lot, lot more safer to build a roundabout than an intersection. So, But like I said, roundabouts don't always fit in every location. So the next one is probably access management. So because roundabouts can facilitate a U-turn, they can be a key element for access management strategy. So it basically eliminates when they have to cross coming traffic. So instead of going directly across and then potentially stopping or crashing, um, they can go up to the roundabout and use that to turn around to get onto the other side of the road. So that just reduces the amount of traffic that needs to cross oncoming traffic. Another one is pedestrian safety. So due to the reduction of vehicle speed in roundabouts um, than an intersection, so roundabouts can sometimes produce more pedestrian friendly crossings because 
they roundabouts often have like the splitter island in between either side of the road so when a pedestrian crosses they only have to focus on one side at a time one side of the road coming so obviously in the game that doesn't really matter but in real life it can be beneficial that they only have to focus on one side of the road walk across wait in, in the middle on the island and then focus on the other side of the road walk across and then they're there but there is a kind of an issue for visually impaired people because they do rely on traffic lights so in that case there might be some kind of sign that is put up saying there are visually impaired people in this area please be really aware and then the speed would be significantly reduced in that area but um, that is a very touchy tricky subject that one another one is the aesthetics so the central island and the splitter islands offer the the opportunity to provide attractive entries or centerpieces to communities or just like through landscaping or monuments and art and and uh, sometimes you have to be careful because you don't want to do something too crazy that's obviously going to distract people but then uh, nonetheless it's still an opportunity to really just make the area look a lot more appealing a lot more I guess fancy sophisticated you know what I mean something like that so the last one is land use so roundabouts can provide sort of a transition area between high speed low speed urban areas they can also be used to show different areas so for example you might have a roundabout going into a different community a different residential area or going into um, an, an industrial park or I don't know it's just it's just they can be used to separate different areas and um, it's used as an entrance point so those are the main benefits that I could think of quickly obviously there's going to be more so if there is something else you can think of let me know down in the comments below like I said there's so so many more but I'm not going to go through all of them um, so now I just want to go through quickly where roughly where you should build them so they're not suitable for everywhere but here are some very basic quick examples so like I said before entrances to different areas or even coming off a highway so obviously going off a highway you have different entrance exit ramps other roads entering exiting exiting so you can just put a roundabout there and that helps facilitate traffic going in all different directions all different ways so um, so like I said before if you have several roads meeting so instead of using a traffic light to create a T intersection you can just put a roundabout and it helps all of those different roads that are meeting just flow a lot more easier another place you can build it is if there's a huge waiting time so if traffic is really building up because they're waiting 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 for the traffic light to go green just put in a roundabout and see what happens it's going to I, I bet it's going to make it a lot more faster they might not speed through the whole area but they might actually just still go at a continuous slow pace everyone gets through a lot quicker trust me so that is one of the main reasons roundabouts are implemented just because it just helps traffic flow so just try it out in, in the game and I'm sure you'll be pleased with that and another main reason not that it matters in the game but in real life if there's a lot of crashes a lot of historical crashes or injuries in that area with an intersection with traffic lights or with a, a stop sign or a yield sign a giveaway sign a roundabout might be more suitable for that area because like I said it significantly reduces the amount of injuries or casualties in that area so those are roughly where to build it um, it's suitable for low to medium traffic sometimes high traffic it really depends how high it is obviously if it's super super dense traffic roundabout is not the best solution so it's really hard to say where at what point you stop doing a roundabout so that would obviously be done by different testing that I can't really say about so I'm sure there is some way that you can measure where to stop but it's really for the game it's really your judgment when to stop using a roundabout and start thinking about different direct routes to some other way so that is a completely different video so and then just quickly where not to build them so if you have really large trucks like semi trailer trucks obviously they're not going to be able to get around a roundabout unless you make a very specific large large space roundabout for them which isn't going to be suitable for a lot of urban areas because of space so maybe not the best for really large trucks some industrial areas do have them because they rely on kind of smaller trucks so they can get away with it um, 
maybe it's not the best to do it near schools. Reason being is if there's a lot of traffic, like originally they would rely on the lady with the little sign to walk out on the road and be like, hey everyone stop, the children are crossing. If there's a lot of traffic, a traffic light might be more suitable. So you can just put in an intersection there and that will help for the children to get across without requiring without requiring the use of the lady with the little sign saying stop. And um, another one that I mentioned earlier was visually impaired crossings. So obviously it's a lot more safer for them to cross with traffic lights than just wandering across with a pedestrian crossing and hoping cars will stop. So like I said, that's a hard topic to cover and I can't really comment too much on that. So, so yeah, those are my main benefits and my main where to build them and where not to build them for roundabouts. And I really hope you guys got a lot from that because it's a very constant question I get asked and I probably won't answer them anymore I'll, or maybe I'll say just look at this video so hopefully that all helped you if not just google it really it's there's so many different studies for this particular topic and you can really dig dig and dig so much into this and it, I find it quite interesting, but um, I could probably talk about this for so long, but I don't want to make this video too long. And I hope the visual that I provided throughout just really makes it a lot more easier to understand. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you got everything that you, all the questions you wanted to know, everything, blah, blah, blah. I hope you got it. I hope you understood. I hope it's all good from now on. And I'm going to continue using roundabouts because I really love them. They're really efficient. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in the next episode. Bye for now.